The Gilgo Beach investigation has just been turned on its head. With the murder conviction of a 51-year-old carpenter, the Gilgo Beach or Long Island serial killer case has been turned on its head. Welcome back to True Crime News. So glad to have you aboard. If this is your first visit, please remember to slap that follow button. This is your host, Ted Corner speaking. Let's jump right into the news. Lawyer John Ray and our attorney Robert Bianca will definitely don't agree about any connection between murder convicted John Bidrolf as the Lisk. John Bidrolf got arrested more than 20 years after his victims were found with the help of DNA. Meanwhile, Bidrolf had built and lived in a large home in Manorville with his wife and their two children. The 31-year-old Rita Tangridi was the first victim tied to Bidrolf. She was found beaten and strangled in November 1993. The next victim was 20-year-old Colleen McNamee, who was found in January 1994, under similar circumstances as Miss Tangredi. Officials told both women had been strangled and suffered severe head injuries. In 2014, it was said both women had been positioned in a certain way. Testimony during the trail revealed the victims were drug addicts and prostitutes. It turned out Bidrolf's brother, Timothy, was sent to jail due to other circumstances, but he was required by law to give a DNA sample. The sample was what led to a hit on a state database tying a male relative of Timothy Bidrolf to the cold case murders. With a DNA sample recovered from Bidrolf's garage that matched semen recovered from both bodies, the police had the killer of Rita Tangri and Colleen McNamee. Judge Richard Ambrose said the pair of murders was as brutal as anything he had ever seen in his 32 years in the criminal justice system. John Bidrolf was sentenced to 50 years to life Tuesday for the 1990 murder of Rita Tangredi and Colleen McNamee. The conviction of Bidrolf made our fancy Robert Bankerville see potential ties to the Gilgo Beach killings. Bankerville told that Bidrolf had likely killed other women and that some aspects of the bodies found in Gilgo Beach were similar to what he had done before. He continued to tell how Bidrolf picked these women because he thought no one cared about them, but there were people who cared about these girls. Besides, Robert Biancaville mentions how the death of several of the victims found along Gilgo Beach may be attributed to the handiwork of Mr. Bidrolf. Gilgo Beach was similar to what has been attributed to Bidrolf's crimes. But he continued telling Bidrolf hated women and all living creatures. It was also mentioned how Bidrolf was a hunter from Manorville and that he had wrestled a pig to the ground and slit its throat. I just don't buy it, Lawyer John Ray said, of any ties between Bidrolf and Gilgo Beach. He continued telling it creates serve and anxiety and false hope. It just isn't so. It encourages these poor people to think they could put their misery to rest, but they can't. John Ray tells how he has done a lot of research in the search for answers for the families to the victims, but he found nothing tying Bidrolf to the other crimes. Ray told he thinks Bankerville's statement is widely optimistic. There is just no near enough evidence for that connection. A lawyer for the family of Gilgo Beach victim Gilbert said any connection between Bidrolf's case and the Beach murders is a stretch. The Southford Country Police declined to comment on any possible connection. No one has been charged in the death of 10 people along the Beach Highway since 2010. We will try to give those of you who might not have heard about the Long Island serial killer an insight to the unsolved case. In 2000, the torso of an unknown female murder victim was discovered in Manorville, the same place where Bidrolf lived. This might be why Bianca will made a connection to Bidrolf and the Lisk. 
The Long Island serial killer case started actually in 2010 at Oak Beach as a search for a missing Craigslist escort named Shannon Gilbert was launched. The police have not officially tied Gilbert's death to the Gilbo murders, but her family maintained that she was one of the victims. In December 2010, the bodies of four other Craigslist escorts were discovered in act. They were wrapped in burlap in the bush of Ocean Parkway in Gilgo Beach. Several months later, the bodies or body parts of six other victims were recovered. The Gilgo Beach victims included eight women, a man dressed as a woman, and a toddler. The first of ten sets of remains believed to be the work of one or more serial killers in the Gilgo Beach area was found in 2010. The first four bodies found were those of women in their 20s who worked as prostitutes and were found within a quarter of a mile from each other. In 2011, during the early months of the Gilgo Beach investigation, detectives found the head, hands and legs of the unidentified woman whose torso had turned up in Manuelville 11 years before. One of the victims, Taylor, was only identified due to her specific tattoo on her torso. Detectives discovered that the unknown killer had tried to scrape off the tattoo of Taylor's body. Taylor's skull and hands were later discovered in Oak Beach adjacent to the Gilbo Beach. A retired NYPD named Vernon Gibberth, who is also an author, has written a book about sex crimes and serial killers. Regarding Bitrolls, Manuel victims and the Gilgo women, Gibberth retorted, I say those bodies, the heads and the hands, are linked to one killer. Last year, Suffolk County Police Chief James Burke came in the spotlight as a possible suspect as the Long Island serial killer, nicknamed Lisk. James Burke was arrested for assaulting a burglary suspect. The suspect told how he had found sex toys and pawn tapes in Burke's official police vehicle. And the woman who had encountered Burke at a spring 2011 party near the area where several victims' bodies were found spoke out. Besides, Watch was written about Burke's effort to keep the FBI out of the Gilgo Beach investigation. As soon as Suffolk County appointed a new police commissioner, Timothy Sini, the FBI was brought into the Long Island serial killer case, known as Lisk. Don't miss out on all the true crime articles we share with our community. Make sure to subscribe to our other social media sites. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. We are open for constructive criticism and ideas. Let us know in the comments how we can improve our channel. Before you leave us, remember to subscribe and click the bell. See you in the next video.